What's up guys? This is the final installment of my uh, frequency uh, foundational videos. We're going to hit up UHF bands and, and above. Uh, I didn't anticipate this taking three freaking videos, but uh, while making it and, and all the information that was just the minimum of information to, to get you started, it, it covered three freaking videos. And uh, it is what it is, like I always say. Okay, so uh, UHF, it's uh, a pretty good frequency range to have. Uh, it's great for cities. So those of you guys that live in a concrete jungle, uh, heavy concrete buildings or uh, high rises and stuff like that, UHF is your band. New York City Police Department, they run UHF for that reason. A lot of transit cops that, that work with uh, mass transit on the ground and stuff like that, UHF, that's the band that they use. San Francisco, another concrete jungle, UHF. Uh, another example personally that I know of, uh, I maintain radio sites that goes into uh, water pumping plants and those places, I mean, they're, 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 they're dams and stuff like that and they're heavily fortified with concrete to handle the, the, uh, the, uh, the water and all that stuff and, and, and it's heavy concrete and they use UHF to communicate within the power of pu pumping plant and stuff like that. So uh, UHF is for, for concrete jungles inside the buildings and I'll show you how, uh, how it does that and, and why UHF is good for that, for that application. In a vehicle application, one big advantage that I kind of enjoy is uh, the antenna has a small footprint. So here is a antenna tuned for 450 megahertz and by the way that is the UHF band and FRS, GMRS and the amateur band UHF fall under that category. Now here is an example of a base camp antenna for permanent or temporary installation within a base camp, uh, your home or even a repeater site up on a mountain. So you could tell this is even smaller compare to my VHF antenna. Uh, once again I'm gonna beat this to the to the ground. Uh, the higher the frequency the smaller the antenna. Now this is the reason why in the city UHF is better than VHF or if you're in a uh, heavily fortified building uh, made out of concrete, uh, heavy concrete, heavy materials and there is the, some debate whether this particular uh, band is good for uh, forest areas where there's a lot of woods and 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 jungle-like rainforest or any any that particular environment there. There's some debate and they're going back and forth, but the VHF takes it with 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 a longer wavelength and longer range and stuff like that. And I could attest that the VHF is pretty good in the forest, uh, being that I that I maintain the the forest uh, radio systems and stuff like that. But anyway. Uh, here, let's, uh, in this scenario, let's say we're in a city. This is a metal door, another metal door. This is the entrance to your building. And you want to communicate whether if you're in the building to another floor or another room or you're outside, try to communicate in. So, here's your, your opening. Actual physical opening. And this here represents your UHF wavelength. So it's, I have it in the form of a sine wave, which uh, it's how they represent uh, signals in, 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 in radio work and stuff like that. And here's your single wavelength coming in. It's able to negotiate the aperture, the opening within this particular uh, scenario here. So you could actually, the, the, the uh, radio wave could actually find its way inside the building through all these little apertures, windows, doors, hallways. Uh, it'll go through uh, drywall and, and some material, uh, what, what are that, what's that called, plywood and stuff like that. It'll penetrate that but it's not so good in concrete and of course metal, it's not going to penetrate metal. But if there's an opening such as this aperture here and the wavelength is coming through, 
you're going to have communications because the, the radio waves could, could, could easily penetrate or intrude. It could also escape. And within the building, if it bounces off of walls and whatnot, it could also easily make its way out if it bounces out. Now for a longer wavelength, such as VHF, and here's my example of, of a VHF sine wave, and here's the uh, actual length of it. Not to scale, but close to it. And this is my VHF signal trying to penetrate my building. It's not going to happen. No matter how much I try, you cannot go against physics. This radio wave is not going to penetrate. If it's polarized in another way and you have this opening such as so, it may penetrate that way. But like I said, depending on polarization, it's not going to penetrate at all where the UHF frequency and above will penetrate that aperture. That is why UHF and above is great for in-city environment. Okay, let's go into the FRS service, the Family Radio Service. It's, uh, it's UHF. I mean, anybody could afford an FRS radio. It's prevalent. Uh, there are a dime a dozen out there. But your capabilities with that is heavily handicapped. And by nature, the FCC wanted it that way for that particular service. First of all, it could only transmit half a watt. That is it. Half a watt. Uh, so your range will be, if you're lucky, three quarters of a mile to a mile, depending on terrain. Uh, another thing that you got to look for too is with an FRS radio, you could not detach the antenna. Let's maybe pretend this is a, uh, a uh, FRS radio. The antenna is physically permanently attached by the factory by law. So there is no way that you could put a external antenna and and enhance the, the 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 capabilities of of the radio by that way. It's fixed. And the radio that they and the antenna that they put on there is the cheapest and, and dumbed down antenna that the manufacturer w would would put on there and if do for the off FRS radio. They use a dumbed down helical antenna permanently attached to that radio and you could not enhance it. You cannot take it off. No FCC license required. Great for beginners and that's FRS. Not a big fan because of the power limitations and, and technical handicapness of it but uh, hey it's better than nothing. Okay the next service is the General Mobile Radio Service GMRS. It's got eight unique channels plus seven that I share with at the FRS this is the band that I personally is looking into. GMRS, what, what's the beauty of it is uh, you're, you are allowed up to 50 watts of power. So in your mobile or your home, home station, you could, you could buy a radio that, that, that is capable of transmitting 50 watts. That's a, that's, that's a good amount of power. That's about average for, for, the, for that particular application. Uh, you need a, an FCC license but no testing required then you are street legal you can use that service the full 50 watts and everything there are some locations that that border the Canadian border we have a frequency agreement with the Canadians so so those border towns around there in Alaska and, and uh, northern United States they're limited to 5 watts internally continental United States you're you're good to go with 50 watts output. But like I said, it's good for, for, for to get my family involved because uh, they're not interested in taking any FCC license for, for hams or anything like that. And I'm not going to subject them to it, you know. But hey, this is an option that I could use high power and have my family included legally. Your whole family is included with that one license, under that one license. So not only your your kids, your wife, your your grandparents are, are in it, your cousins, your 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 uncles and even in laws. Uh, that's FCC rules. It's it's written in, on paper. All those people are, are are included. So that's excellent to staying legal. 
you could uh, get a GMRS radio, which there isn't many out there, but you could use uh, business uh, commercial radios to to transmit on, on GMRS. Uh, that's legal. That is the route that I'm taking. Not only that, the small footprint of the antenna I could place on the, on the vehicles. Uh, I could put a base station here in my house. And, and the small footprint again in my in my in my in my home, uh, I won't stand out that much as well. So that's the route that I'm taking. I got 50 watts of power to play with. Uh, no testing required for my family because they're not interested in taking any test. Uh, they're covered. My whole extended family is covered, and uh, that's 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 good all all the way around. In my case that would work for me anybody else uh, what have you the only thing that stinks about GMRS is that the, there's only eight unique channels t uh, to choose from and an additional seven frequencies that that is shared with the FRS uh, service now let, let me warn you now because there's a lot of units out there that's sort of like dual mode you, you'll have a, a, a radio and the manufacturer claims that it's an FRS slash GMRS, fine and dandy. Uh, when you when you switch over to GMRS, I think it has a thing of two watts output on that HT, and that's it. But the thing is, by law, you cannot change the antenna out because it's got FRS frequencies on there. It's 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 advertising it as an FRS slash GMRS, so. The antenna is permanently attached, so you just hamstringed yourself into a radio that you cannot augment with an efficient antenna or replacement antenna. So that's just a warning for, for choosing gear that, 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 that does both services. Uh, it's a sales gimmick and somehow they got, you know, through the, uh, the FCC, you know, loophole and, and were able to do that. But uh, uh, if you're going to go GMRS, go all the way. Get a radio that, that you could detach an, an antenna and have an antenna port such as this here that you could uh, affix another antenna and, and, and run it outside in your vehicle or, or, or whatever configuration you want to you wanna set up. It's options. Your options are open. If you get one of these FRS slash GMRS, you, you, you just handicapped yourself in my opinion. And that 80 bucks is, is for nothing. So that's my opinion. Okay guys, uh, that's my three part series on how to choose comm gear according to frequency in your environment. Uh, there's no magic bullet to this. It's all a compromise. You want to go long distance, international, national, HF, 2 megahertz. That's what you got to use. No repeaters, uh, no satellite. If you have the proper antenna and the wattage, you, you could reach that distance. Uh, VHF, uh, all around workhorse. That's the happy medium. That's the band I like the most. Uh, the antenna size is pretty good. Uh, not too big, not too small. Uh, the performance is excellent and, and uh, it's my preference. UHF, uh, lower in uh, higher in frequency, less uh, capabilities as far as long haul, but great for in cities and penetrating through buildings and concrete jungles and tunnels and stuff like that. Uh, basically, uh, if you want to just to get started, right off the bat, hit the road running, uh, you got CB, which is good, and FRS, which is also good and cheap, and you got mirrors uh, in the VHF band. Rare is only five frequencies, but with those radios, you can hit the road running without a license. Uh, of course, one thing that always stops everybody is the cost. Uh, do what you can with your budget. It's expensive if you get into the HF band or, or even deeper into this it gets really expensive really quick hello hello what you good uh, yeah man hope you're going nowhere hello who's hello? 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 this hello my cat who's this hello oh please speak to me don't leave me